And now we move on to the Greater Antilles, and we begin with Cuba, an island nation that separates the open Atlantic from the Western Caribbean Sea. Cuba is often struck by fierce Atlantic hurricanes, with one of the most conducive hurricane environments directly to its south. Since 1950, no less than 58 tropical cyclones have made landfall here, that's more than one a year. Of those, 27 were tropical storms, 12 Category 1 hurricanes, 6 Category 2 storms, 8 Category 3 major hurricanes, and 6 striking Cuba at Category 4 intensity. The costliest hurricane in Cuba was Ike in 2008, causing damages of $7.3 billion. Flora was the deadliest in 1963, causing 1,750 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall was Sandy at her peak intensity as a Category 3 storm last year. In the final days of September 1963, a tropical depression formed in the eastern Atlantic and completed its crossing as a Category 3 hurricane by the time it passed over Tobago and through the Windward Islands. The storm continued into the Caribbean Sea where it attained its peak intensity as a Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure around 940 millibars. Flora made landfall near this intensity in Haiti and continued on to southeastern Cuba as a Category 3 major hurricane. Flora slowed down in forward motion and remained a Category 3 storm for a whole day over land before beginning to weaken as it stalled along the south coast of the country. Flora remained a hurricane as it remained nearly stationary and began to move back over land as it headed towards the east. After over four days near or over southeastern Cuba, Flora finally pulled away through the southern Bahamas and re-strengthened out to sea to the southeast of Bermuda. The storm eventually turned extratropical near Newfoundland. Hurricane Flora caused historic amounts of rainfall over Hispaniola, Jamaica and Cuba, causing rainfall totals of 40 inches in the Dominican Republic, 57 inches in Haiti, 60 inches in Jamaica and an astounding 100 inches, just over 8 feet of rain in one Cuban location. The storm caused thousands of fatalities in Haiti and Cuba, with more in other parts of the Greater and Lesser Antilles. In all, there were over 7,000 fatalities and damages of up to $800 million. Near the end of October 2001, a tropical depression formed along the eastern coast of Nicaragua and remained nearly stationary for more than a day before heading northwards following the coastline. After leaving the coast near the Honduras border, Michelle was named as a tropical storm and the system moved slowly towards the north, with a slight westward element included. Soon the storm began to intensify and eventually reached Category 4 intensity. After brief weakening, Michelle re-strengthened and peaked as a 140 mph per hour Category 4 hurricane, an intensity which the storm maintained until landfall in Cuba. Michelle emerged on the other side as a Category 1 hurricane and maintained this intensity as it passed over Andros Island and moved out to sea through the rest of the central Bahamas. The storm caused most of its fatalities as a tropical depression where it dropped heavy rain in Nicaragua and Honduras, though most of the $2 billion in damages occurred in Cuba where Michelle made its strongest landfall. In July 2005, Hurricane Dennis affected large parts of the southern coast of Cuba as a major hurricane, making two landfalls there as a Category 4 storm. In total, there were 16 fatalities in Cuba, along with nearly $1.5 billion in damages, as well as widespread failings of electricity and communication networks in the country. In late August 2008, Hurricane Gustave ravaged the western half of Cuba, where it struck as a Category 4 storm. The hurricane caused particularly heavy damage on the Isle of Youth, with damages throughout the country totaling over $2 billion. Remarkably though, no fatalities occurred here. It was a matter of days before Cuba experienced its next major hurricane, this time in the form of Ike. Ike made landfall in the east of the country as a Category 4 hurricane, and the storm passed over most of the country with winds of hurricane intensity. Ike became the costliest hurricane to ever strike Cuba by a fair margin, with a damage total of over $7 billion. Seven fatalities also occurred here. In November that same year, a tropical depression formed to the east of Nicaragua and developed into Tropical Storm Paloma 12 hours later. The storm quickly continued to intensify, becoming a hurricane the next day and a major hurricane as it passed close to the Cayman Islands. Paloma peaked the strong Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour before encountering the coast of Cuba where it slowed down and made landfall still at hurricane intensity. However, the storm quickly degenerated into a remnant low over Cuba and after a while moved back towards the west through the rest of Cuba and finally dissipated in the Gulf of Mexico near the coast of Florida. Paloma caused major damage near the point of landfall as well as on the Cayman Islands. Damages in the latter amounted to $155 million with a further $300 million reported in Cuba as well as one fatality in Jamaica.
In October last year, Hurricane Sandy struck Cuba with its peak intensity in terms of sustained winds as a Category 3 storm. Sandy caused $2 billion of damage in Cuba, where up to 150,000 buildings were destroyed and flooding caused problems along coastal areas. In total, 11 fatalities occurred in Cuba as a result of the storm. Situated offshore the Greater Antilles and Florida, we have the Lucian Archipelago, comprising the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Their location puts them in a fairly vulnerable position with regards to hurricanes, and many a strong storm has passed through these islands in the past. So we have 53 cyclone landfalls on the record since 1950, 19 of which were tropical storms, 12 Category 1 hurricanes, 8 Category 2 hurricanes, 9 Category 3 major hurricanes, a single Category 4 storm and a solitary Category 5 hurricane. The costliest cyclone here was Hurricane Sandy last year, causing damages of $700 million. The deadliest cyclone is believed to be Hurricane Andrew in 1992, causing four. The last storm to make landfall here was Hurricane Sandy in 2012. In August 1992, Hurricane Andrew bore down on the central and northern Bahamas as a Category 5 hurricane, making landfall on the Luthera Island at that intensity with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. The storm then struck the Berry Islands as a Category 4 storm before moving on to Florida. There were four fatalities and $250 million in damages. In mid-October 1996, a tropical depression formed in the Southern Caribbean Sea to the east of Nicaragua and progressed towards the northwest, eventually developing into Tropical Storm Lily to the northeast of Honduras. Lily continued towards the north, becoming a hurricane on its approach to Cuba, making landfall as it reached Category 2 intensity. The hurricane passed over the central part of the island and then passed through the Bahamas, peaking in intensity as a 115 mile per hour Category 3 storm as it began to move out to sea. In the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, Lily caused hurricane force winds and sporadic damages. The storm caused $362 million in damages as it passed over Cuba and resulted in 22 fatalities throughout its life in Central America, the United States and the United Kingdom as an extratropical storm. In October 2005, Hurricane Wilma exited the coast of Florida and re-intensified into a Category 3 hurricane, passing just to the north of the northernmost Bahamas. The storm caused moderate damage and flooding on the islands of Abaco, Bimini and Grand Bahama, where the storm passed closest to. The storm caused a single fatality and damages of $100 million. At the end of October 2007, Tropical Storm Noel exited the coast of Cuba and passed through the Bahamas on the first day of November, attaining hurricane status as it began to clear the islands, before turning extratropical over a day later out to sea. The storm's most profound effects in the Bahamas were in the form of its heavy rainfall, which led to serious flooding on Abaco and Long Island. The storm caused one fatality across the islands. Hurricane Irene swept through the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas as a powerful hurricane, peaking at Category 3 intensity in the early stages of its passage. Irene caused power outages and minor to moderate damages in the Turks and Caicos Islands, and then more significant damage in the Bahamas, causing severe damage on some islands amounting to $40 million. Last October, Hurricane Sandy emerged from eastern Cuba as a Category 2 storm and persisted as a hurricane as the storm travelled through the Bahamas. Throughout the nation, the storm caused a single fatality, as well as power outages and significant damages, amounting to $700 million. And now we find ourselves in the Caribbean Sea itself, with the island nation of Jamaica and the much smaller British overseas territory of the Cayman Islands. Many storms that enter the Caribbean spell bad news for these two locations, as they're often caught in the paths of significant storms. However, due to their small size, not that many storms have actually made direct landfalls on the islands, with only 10 since 1950. Five of those were tropical storms, three Category 1 hurricanes, and then one of each category above that. So, despite the small number of landfalls, these areas have experienced some severe ones over the years. The costliest cyclone was Gilbert in 1988, causing damages of $2 billion. Gilbert also remains the deadliest storm, causing 45 fatalities. The last storm to strike this area was Hurricane Sandy, who struck Jamaica last October. 
In August 1951, a tropical depression formed in the Central Atlantic, and after slow movement initially, the system accelerated shortly before becoming Tropical Storm Charlie. Charlie passed through the Lesser Antilles and into the Caribbean, and steadily intensified, becoming a Category 2 hurricane before making landfall in Jamaica at that intensity. Remaining as a hurricane, Charlie continued west-northwestwards and intensified once more towards its peak as a Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 964 millibars. Charlie made landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula at that intensity and then weakened as it passed through the Gulf of Mexico. The storm intensified once more shortly before its landfall in Mexico, peaking as a Category 4 hurricane a second time. Charlie caused 152 fatalities in Jamaica along with at least 100 more in Mexico. In all, damages amounted to $75 million. In September 2004, Ivan passed close to Jamaica and the Cayman Islands as a powerful hurricane fluctuating between Category 4 and 5 intensity. The storm caused 17 fatalities in Jamaica and 2 in the Cayman Islands, whilst damages resulted in $360 million in Jamaica and a higher amount of $1.8 billion in the Cayman Islands. In July 2005, a tropical depression formed in the Central Atlantic and by the next day had intensified to become Tropical Storm Emily. Emily gradually intensified, attaining hurricane status as it passed through the Windward Islands. The storm continued towards the west-northwest, intensifying to become a Category 4 hurricane for a short period before weakening and then regaining strength over the course of two or three days, and attained a brief peak intensity as a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 929 millibars to the southwest of Jamaica. Emily began to weaken slowly towards its landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula, where it struck as a Category 4 storm, and then considerably weakened as it moved into the Gulf of Mexico. Emily soon began to intensify once more, attaining a secondary peak as a Category 3 major hurricane before its landfall in northern Mexico. In Jamaica, Emily caused heavy rain and landslides, helping contribute to five fatalities and $65 million in damages. Dean was another major hurricane that passed close to the south of Jamaica, this time as a strong Category 4 storm. The hurricane then began to intensify as it began to leave the island and make its closest approach to the Caymans. In Jamaica there were three fatalities and $300 million in damages, whilst the Cayman Islands received only power outages. Hurricane Sandy last year was the most recent hurricane to affect the region, making landfall in the eastern half of Jamaica as a developing Category 1 hurricane. Widespread outages resulted across the island, though only a single fatality was reported. Total damages here amounted to $100 million. Bordering the Central Caribbean Sea between Jamaica, Cuba and Puerto Rico lies the island of Hispaniola, shared by Haiti to the west and the Dominican Republic to the east. This island has experienced its fair share of intense storms, with deforestation and poverty compounding the situation in the event of a hurricane landfall, particularly in Haiti. 26 cyclones have made landfall here, 13 tropical storms, 3 category 1 hurricanes, 3 category 2 storms, 3 category 3 major hurricanes, 3 category 4 storms and a single category 5 hurricane. The costliest storm was Hurricane David in 1979 causing damages of $1 billion. The deadliest cyclone was Hurricane Flora in 1963 causing 5,400 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall was Isaac last year. In September 1966, a tropical depression formed in the eastern Atlantic and slowly moved towards the west-northwest for a few days, eventually becoming Tropical Storm Inez in the central Atlantic. The storm continued to approach the Lesser Antilles, passing over Guadeloupe as a Category 3 major hurricane. Inez continued through the Caribbean as a Category 4 storm, making landfall in the Dominican Republic and Haiti at or near that intensity, and weakened to a Category 1 storm as it passed between Haiti and Cuba. However, Inez rapidly intensified, becoming a major hurricane again by the time it made landfall in Cuba, though again weakened as it passed through the island, briefly weakening into a tropical storm as it moved northeastwards upon leaving Cuba. 
Inez stalled to the northwest of Andros Island in the Bahamas and then almost performed a U-turn, moving back towards the west-southwest over the Florida Keys and then the Gulf of Mexico, passing close to the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula as a strong Category 3 hurricane. Inez then reached Category 4 intensity for the second time and maintained this for over two days before nearing the coast of Mexico, making landfall there as a Category 3 storm. Ines finally dissipated inland the next day. The storm caused significant damage in Guadalupe, damaging or destroying several thousand homes, contributing to 40 fatalities and $50 million in damages. Ines made its strongest landfall in the Dominican Republic, which sustained winds at or near 150 miles per hour. Flooding and strong winds destroyed hundreds of houses here and caused around 100 fatalities and $12 million in damages. The worst effects of the storm occurred in Haiti, where heavy rainfall and strong winds caused the destruction of thousands of residences and up to a thousand were reported dead, with damages amounting to over $20 million. In Cuba, Florida and Mexico, Inez caused tens more fatalities and tens of millions more in damages, amounting to a final damage total of over $220 million. In late August 1979, a tropical depression formed in the central Atlantic and soon developed into Tropical Storm David. David then began to intensify fairly quickly, becoming a Category 4 hurricane 48 hours later. The storm then moved towards the northwest on approach to the Lesser Antilles, passing north of Barbados and moving directly over the island of Dominica as a powerful Category 4 hurricane. David entered the Caribbean and began to peak in intensity as a ferocious Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 924 millibars. David made landfall in the Dominican Republic at or near its peak intensity and moved over Hispaniola, finally losing hurricane status as it grazed the eastern tip of Cuba. David quickly re-strengthened though and passed through the Bahamas as a hurricane before skimming the eastern coast of Florida as a Category 2 storm. David made its final landfall as a minimal hurricane in Georgia. David ravaged the Dominican Republic, causing sustained winds of 160 miles per hour in some locations, as well as severe flooding as a result of torrential rainfall. Entire communities were washed away by the intense hurricane and transport and communication links were crippled. In all, the storm caused around 2,000 fatalities and damages of at least $1 billion. In Haiti, David had significantly weakened and damages were much less significant. The next year, a tropical depression formed on the first day of August in the eastern Atlantic and progressed westwards, becoming Tropical Storm Allen on August the 3rd. Allen continued towards the west and intensified to Category 3 intensity as it clipped Barbados and passed within touching distance of St. Lucia as a powerful Category 4 hurricane. Allen continued into the Caribbean Sea where it became a Category 5 hurricane with a minimum central pressure of 911 millibars. Allen passed close to the coast of Haiti near this intensity and passed just north of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands as a Category 4 storm. Allen intensified again and peaked between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 190 miles per hour and a central pressure of 899 millibars. Allen passed close to the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 5 storm and weakened slightly over the Gulf of Mexico. However, Allen retained Category 5 intensity for the third time on approach to the coasts of Mexico and Texas, where it finally made landfall near the border as a Category 3 major hurricane. Barbados sustained significant, though not severe, damages from Allen. St. Lucia suffered 18 fatalities and damages of a quarter of a billion dollars. Allen caused the worst effects in Haiti, where major flooding coupled with strong winds caused the deaths of 220 people and damages of $400 million. Elsewhere along its path, damages were significant, including six fatalities and $300 million reported in Texas, where Allen made its final landfall. In mid-September 2004, a tropical depression formed near the Leeward Islands and soon became a tropical storm named Jeanne. The storm continued in a somewhat uncertain fashion towards Puerto Rico, making landfall there as a tropical storm and attaining hurricane status near the eastern tip of Hispaniola, an intensity it held only for 12 hours. Xi'an weakened into a tropical depression due to land interaction, but held on to reach tropical storm status once more to the north of Haiti. Xi'an moved in a northward direction from here and attained hurricane intensity for a second time out to sea. Xi'an peaked as a Category 2 storm whilst executing a long-winded clockwise loop, weakening towards the end of it. However, Xi'an, now moving westwards, began to intensify again, eventually peaking as a Category 3 major hurricane as it passed through the northernmost Bahamas and made landfall in Florida, eventually dissipating over the mid-Atlantic states.
On Hispaniola, Jean caused severe flooding, particularly in northern Haiti. The storm caused over 3,000 fatalities on the island, with damages of over a quarter of a billion dollars. Puerto Rico faced similar conditions with eight fatalities and $170 million in damages, and the southeastern United States also bore significant damages amounting up to $7 billion, along with five fatalities. Near the end of August 2008, a tropical depression formed in the open Atlantic and was soon named Tropical Storm Hannah as it began to pass north of the Lesser Antilles. Hannah continued in a west-northwesterly direction, turning towards the south after a few days, now located north of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, which Hannah passed through as a Category 1 hurricane. The storm weakened as it began to stall just north of Haiti, where it remained for nearly two days before moving back towards the north, almost the same way it came. Hannah then moved towards the northwest, passing the Bahamas and making landfall in the United States. Haiti suffered heavy damage from unrelenting rainfall, which caused flooding over six feet deep in some areas. Over 500 fatalities occurred in Haiti as a result of the storm, with a single fatality across the border in the Dominican Republic. In the United States, Hannah caused flooding, leading to seven fatalities in all. In August last year, Tropical Storm Isaac made landfall in Haiti as a strong tropical storm, causing flooding which contributed to 24 fatalities and $250 million in damages, along with a further $30 million and five fatalities in the Dominican Republic. Isaac then moved on to the United States, where significant flooding occurred in Florida, Louisiana and Mississippi. Now moving on to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, mostly administered by the United States, though part of the latter is a British overseas territory. These islands are located between Hispaniola and the rest of the Leeward Islands, and have seen numerous hurricanes pass or strike the islands, including long tracking storms from the Cape Verde region. Due to their small sizes, only 12 storms have made direct landfall since 1950, 7 tropical storms, 2 Category 1 hurricanes, 2 Category 2 storms, and a single Category 4 major hurricane. The costliest storm was Hurricane Marilyn in 1995, causing damages of $2.3 billion. Hurricane Donna was the deadliest cyclone, causing 114 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall was Hurricane Irene in 2011. In September 1970, what would turn out to be a very long-lived tropical depression formed near the coast of Africa and tracked generally just north of west for over a week, slowing down as it approached the Lesser Antilles. The storm passed over St Lucia and entered the Eastern Caribbean. The depression continued to slow as it turned towards the north, becoming almost stationary at times, and finally made a landfall in the Dominican Republic. The depression then turned towards the northeast and out to sea where it finally dissipated on October the 11th. The system dumped huge amounts of rainfall over Puerto Rico in particular, with over 40 inches in one location. The Virgin Islands and Barbados were also affected by the storm, with a total of 22 fatalities throughout the Eastern Caribbean and damages of over $65 million. In 1989, Hugo ravaged the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico as a major hurricane. Damages in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico amounted to combined totals of 18 fatalities and damages of $3.3 billion. <laughs> 
Six years later, in late August 1995, a tropical depression formed to the south of the Cape Verde Islands and made no haste in its movement towards the west over the open Atlantic. Two days later, Tropical Storm Luis was named, and a couple of days later that became a hurricane over the central Atlantic. Strengthening continued and Luis peaked as a strong Category 4 hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour and a central pressure of 935 millibars. The intensity it held onto for the most part until passing through the Leeward Islands, at which point the storm curved towards the northwest. Luis began to weaken at this point, curving to the west of Bermuda and eventually making landfall in Newfoundland as a minimal hurricane. Lewis caused heavy damage in the northernmost Leeward Islands as it roared through with winds exceeding 130 miles per hour. Whilst no fatalities were reported in the US Virgin Islands, damages there did amount to $300 million. In Puerto Rico, damages were slightly less, $200 million, but two fatalities occurred here. Just a day after Lewis dissipated, another tropical depression formed in the central Atlantic and quickly intensified to become Tropical Storm Marilyn, becoming a hurricane the day later. Marilyn then passed through the Leeward Islands as a Category 1 storm and continued to intensify on approach to the Virgin Islands, passing through as a Category 2 hurricane. Marilyn peaked as a major hurricane with winds of 115 miles per hour north of Puerto Rico before weakening again soon afterwards. Marilyn went on to pass Bermuda and turned extratropical in the North Atlantic. Hurricane Marilyn caused extensive damage in the Virgin Islands with devastating effects on the island of St. Thomas where damages amounted to $1.5 billion and eight fatalities were reported. In St. Croix and St. John, damages collectively amounted to half a billion dollars with three fatalities occurring here. In Puerto Rico, a further fatality occurred with a cost of $300 million. Hurricane George passed through the area in September 1998 as a weakening major hurricane. The storm caused nearly $10 million in damages in the British Virgin Islands, mainly to private residences. The US Virgin Islands suffered sporadic power outages with isolated damage amounting to $2 million. Puerto Rico was particularly affected by the storm, causing devastation in some areas along with heavy rains that caused considerable amounts of flooding. George caused eight fatalities and $2 billion in damages here. Now we move on to the Leeward Islands, which comprise the northern section of the Lesser Antilles, which effectively serve as a gateway to the Caribbean for many long-tracking tropical cyclones. As a result, this area is commonly struck or grazed by strong hurricanes or developing storms. Since 1950, this region has received 30 direct landfalls, 15 from tropical storms, 5 Category 1 hurricanes, 3 Category 2 storms, 5 Category 3 major hurricanes, and 2 intense Category 4 storms. The costliest cyclone for this region was Hurricane Lewis in 1995, causing $2.5 billion in damages. The deadliest was Hugo in 1989, causing 54 fatalities. The last storm to strike this area was Tropical Storm Irene in 2011. Near the end of August 1950, Tropical Storm Dog formed somewhere in the Central Atlantic on approach to the Lesser Antilles. Dog was first detected as a strong tropical storm, which intensified to become a hurricane by August the 31st. The storm proceeded towards the west-northwest, curving further northwest as it passed through the northernmost Lesser Antilles as a strengthening hurricane. Dog continued towards the northwest, clearing land areas, and peaked as a powerful Category 5 hurricane over the open Atlantic waters. Dog stalled to the southwest of Bermuda and weakened before curving away from the United States east coast still as a hurricane. Antigua and Barbuda experienced the worst of the storm, causing significant damages and destroying the homes of thousands of residents. 
Throughout this region, damages totaled over a million dollars and there were at least two fatalities. Six years later, in August 1956, Tropical Storm Betsy formed in the Central Atlantic and quickly intensified as it approached the Lesser Antilles, passing to the north of Barbados as a major Category 3 hurricane, before passing between Dominica and Guadeloupe as a weakening Category 2 storm. Betsy then continued towards the northwest, making hurricane landfall in Puerto Rico and moving on to pass close to the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas. Betsy caused strong winds in Guadeloupe in particular, with considerable damage to property and agriculture. 18 deaths also occurred in this region. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands also experienced tropical storm and hurricane conditions, causing widespread damage on Puerto Rico and a further 16 fatalities. Hurricane Georges swept through the Leeward Islands as a weakening major hurricane in September 1998, causing most of its damages in St Kitts and Nevis, as well as in Antigua and Barbuda. The storm caused eight fatalities in those two regions, as well as over $650 million of damage across the Lesser Antilles. The next year, in November 1999, a late-season storm formed in the western half of the Caribbean and advanced eastwards, attaining hurricane status south of Jamaica. The storm continued eastwards, unusual for storms in this region, and began to intensify on September the 16th, eventually peaking as a Category 4 hurricane near the end of the 17th, whilst nearing the Virgin Islands. Lenny passed just south and began to stall near the rest of the Leeward Islands, slowly tracking southeast as it weakened into a tropical storm. Lenny then turned towards the northeast and dissipated out to sea. Lenny caused nine fatalities in the Lesser Antilles, along with strong winds and over 30 inches of rain in St. Martin and over 15 inches of rain on many other islands. In total, Lenny caused damages of nearly $700 million. In mid-October 2008, a tropical depression formed in the eastern half of the Caribbean and developed into Tropical Storm Omar on the 14th. Omar was slow moving initially but began to accelerate towards the northeast as a hurricane, rapidly intensifying on the 16th to peak as a Category 4 storm as it passed through the Leeward Islands. Omar then moved out to sea, turning post-tropical in the northern Atlantic. Whilst Omar was a strong storm when it peaked, damages were for the most part not severe, however power outages occurred on many islands and damages across the Lesser Antilles amounted to nearly $80 million. There were no direct fatalities as a result of the storm, though one indirect death did occur. Hurricane Earl passed through the area in late August 2010 as a major hurricane, causing strong winds and power outages, particularly in Antigua and Barbuda. Total damages throughout the Leeward Islands amounted to around $40 million, with two fatalities occurring. 